test one, two. All right, Jerry, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, today is a really fantastic day for us and to be here for a, uh, a tremendous, significant grant announcement. Um, before I, I begin, I want to thank uh, all our speakers this morning, uh, particularly including our uh, acting administrator of the Federal Transit Administration and also uh, a longtime friend and public transit advocate going back to our days in the Bronx. So, yeah, <laughs> Veronica and I go way back. Uh, but it's so exciting to have her as the uh, Federal Transit Administrator, which is such a critical position for us, and certainly uh, being backed by her team here in the region with Mike Collada. You know, thanks so much for making the trip uh, up here for this. It's cr incredibly exciting. Um, on, the, on the congressional delegation side, certainly uh, Congresswoman Mikey Shell representing uh, the uh, 11th District. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, and we all know her as a relentless uh, champion for New Jersey and uh, particularly a strong advocate for transit. And the only person I think who may be a stronger advocate in her district is her husband who rides us regularly. Um, <laughs> but on a serious note, uh, yesterday being Memorial Day, uh, I'd also like to make a personal side uh, observation for uh, Mikey. Uh, you know, uh, my son, uh, as you know, is a uh, Marine fighter pilot with class of 19 from the Academy. And um, I was able to get back, just came back from a NATO exercise, and he was commenting not just on the exercise itself with our allies, um, but the leadership that you get. I mean, all the servicemen and women are great, but particularly the leaders, they went to West Point, the, you know, Air Force Academy, the Naval Academy. You really see a certain la leadership and dedication, and I think we are really lucky to have that in Mikey Sherrill serving beyond her a military service to be serving for us and fighting for us in, in Congress. So, Mikey, thanks, and I hope you had a good, good weekend. Um, equally, somebody who fights just as hard for us is Congressman Rob Menendez, representing New Jersey 8th District, and his uh, support on the House T&I Committee is uh, we just had uh, a few weeks ago the first uh, hearing by the TNI committee, and despite how you hear things don't get done in Washington, what Rob has worked with behind the scenes, we saw that in that hearing, has really been uh, dramatic in showing how bipartisanship can work on issues as traditional as, uh, as transit. So Rob, thanks for all you do for us, both uh, before in public and behind the scenes. Uh, we also have acting uh, NJDOT commissioner and our board chair, Fran O'Connor, whose uh, guidance since coming on has been really great and has a real positive impact working with all our staff, getting into all our operations. And uh, Fran, really appreciate you diving in and being really supportive. Uh, and then uh, closer to home here, though, uh, State Senator, I almost said Assemblywoman, because uh, that's when we started, uh, Brittany uh, Timberlake, uh, who has been instru instrumental in fostering the legislative support for uh, you know, transportation projects such, such as this across her state, but particularly this being her district when I first came in, this station, underserved community, a station that goes back you know, from the 1800s that has been really needed major overhaul, and today is finally you're getting a victory out of this. Uh, certainly Mayor Ted Green has also uh, been working for us and been really supportive. You and your, yeah, your team, working with our team, really has helped make today possible. Um, but we are here today to celebrate FTA's announcement of a significant funding program uh, and as part of their All Stations Accessibility Program. And while I'll leave uh, the uh, Administrator Vanderpool to share the details of their program, I'm pleased to highlight that NJ Transit has been awarded $83.3 .3 million in grant funding. Yeah, that's a heck of a lot of money for, uh, you know, for the station. It's not just the station, it's the you know, ADA compliant, the elevators, uh, the the viaduct, et cetera, there's a lot of work to be done on the platform, so it is a major transformative uh, project. And I think uh, this uh, generous investment will enable us to really uh, complete all the development and the rebirth that you see uh, here at Brick Church. Um, I think, as I said, through this grant, it will be the install the uh, high-level platforms for swift, convenient boarding and deboarding elevators, all the ADA accessories. Uh, they'll make it as easy uh, and accessible for all, all our riders. In, including the pedestrian tunnel, the staircases, and other related work. Um, the, uh, you take all these uh, investments together, and it really will make an incredible uh, difference to the countless residents uh, and enhance the quality of life, as well as boosting, boosting the local economy. I think when you look uh, overall, the President Biden's uh, you know, bipartisan infrastructure law, the IIJA, in total, NJ Transit alone has received more than $1.6 billion through the IIJA. 
and these investments are making our system safer, more reliable, and more accessible for all our customers. One other note I should touch on is transit-oriented development. Uh, the senator and I were commenting, for me as a lifelong, uh, you know, or last 30 years as a rider on the M&E, um, really seeing how this is, you always used to be able to tell you were coming into Brick Church because you could see the Brick Church far away. All this development now is great for the economy. Uh, New Jersey Transit, you know, doesn't get any real estate benefit from it, but what that does to the New Jersey's economy overall is huge. And uh, certainly you see that if you look around here, how transformative transit-oriented development can be that is both environmentally and socially responsible. Uh, so this is really, I think, a great example, not just of a station improvement, but really of revitalizing a, a whole neighborhood. Um, and I think for New Jersey Transit, in addition to this station, we have more than 20 uh, rail stations and active uh, stages of development from construction to from planning. And according to our senior vice president, Rich Schaefer, uh, of capital programs that this is the most active station work on our rail system at any one time since the 1800s. So uh, we're also working at Newark Penn Station, Hoboken Terminal, and Walter Rand, to name some of the big ones. But uh, in closing, let me just say that this kind of project is one of the best investments we can make in New Jersey. This project will stand the test of time for decades to come, improving the lives of countless commuters in future, promoting a cleaner, more sustainable planet, by enhancing public transit accessibility, supporting economic growth and vitality for generations to come. Uh, so it is a testament to, to the leadership, uh, particularly in Washington, to provide us this kind of funding, and uh, certainly uh, the leadership in Trenton under Governor Murphy, uh, whose support has been critical to get us to this point today. So with that, uh, I would like to now turn, uh, take the pleasure of having uh, Administrator Vanderpool come up and uh, say a few words. Veronica? I'm going to try to do this without my sunglasses. I have little blinds in the sun. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin, for that warm introduction. And welcome back to my home region. I am a native New Yorker, very familiar with uh, the transit systems in our New York metro region. And I'm delighted to be here to see such a great turnout, to be here at this historic station um, with so much support from our elected and appointed officials. And I want to begin by thanking so many of you, because we cannot be at this point at this moment celebrating this investment without support of our congressional leaders, our state leaders, and our local leaders. So I want to start by thanking Congressman um, Rob Menendez, uh, Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, State Senator Brittany Timberlake, Acting Commissioner Fran O'Connor from NJDOT, Mayor Ted Green uh, from East Orange, and then, of course, adding my thanks again to Kevin Corbett and his great stellar team at NJ Transit. And I will never offer any remarks of thanks and gratitude without thanking our regional team uh, based in New York City, led by uh, Regional Administrator Mike Colada and our talented staff at FTA. So I want to thank you all for your continued support. Our regional team really is um, our federal effort on the ground in this region. They help manage our federal investments and work with all of the grantees to make sure that money is flowing into the transit systems and that we at the federal government are seeing the strongest return on our investment. And what we see with transit investment is one of the biggest ROIs. So I'm very glad to be here today. So what we're celebrating today actually is the fulfillment of a promise by the bipartisan infrastructure law. And that promise is we are going to invest in our aging infrastructure to make sure that it's accessible and equitable and that it is employing using some of the most innovative technology. So we're here to celebrate that moment. We're here to celebrate that investment. And FTA is delighted to be here in East Orange to highlight all that the bipartisan infrastructure investment comes to bear and comes to, to represent. So on behalf, gotta love it, right? On behalf of Secretary Pete Buttigieg and our entire team at Federal Transit Administration and of course the U.S. Department of Transportation, I want to thank and congratulate 
everyone in New Jersey who has been responsible and a partner in this. It should not be understated that when we have partnerships at the federal level, at the state level, at the local level, at the business level, with community stakeholders and associations and nonprofits and advocates and writers, we see this kind of success. And you heard uh, Kevin talk about $1.6 billion coming um, to New Jersey Transit because of the bipartisan infrastructure, infrastructure law. But New Jersey has received over $5 billion in funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law, again, because of this nexus and synergy that all of you bring to the table. So today, we are here to celebrate $83 million coming to Brick Church Station. And we should be clapping because this is a historic station built in 1836. Think about that, 1836. We're standing in history. We're standing on history, celebrating again a historic moment provided by the bipartisan infrastructure law. This station was opened in 1922. Incredible moment for us to think about how we can invest to make sure that this station is accessible to everyone who needs it. And what we've realized is that in this country, we have many transit systems, particularly our older ones, that are not accessible to everyone who needs them. And that means that transit cannot be the lifeline of opportunity for everyone, only for some. And what we're trying to do here is to level that playing field. So with $83 million through the Bipartisan Infrastructures Law ASAP program, Accessible Station, um, All Station Accessibility Program, we're here to say that we're making progress toward this very important goals. So this station, you may not know, does not have elevators. So if you are in a physically assisted device, how do you use this? You don't. You go to one of the other stations in East Orange or South Orange. Not, in, not convenient. This is about increasing the convenience, again, leveling the playing field. Thank you. With this funding, NJ Transit will replace low-level platforms with higher-level platforms. So it makes it easier for people, not just in a wheelchair, right? This isn't just about people in a wheelchair. This is about people who have broken their foot and are limping around. This is about parents who are pushing strollers. This is about young people who are carrying their book bags and toting lots of things around. This is about making accessibility available to everyone. With this funding, NJ Transit will also install two elevators. Two new elevators with backup generators. Think about this, everyone. How many times have you gone to a station and the elevator is not working? Well, you need backup, and that's what NJ Transit is going to do as well. And additionally, they're working with the city of East Orange to enhance the pedestrian tunnel, because every transit rider is a pedestrian. You have to walk to your station, whether it's a bus stop or a rail station, in order to access that opportunity. So many of you might know um, that, again, this station was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. So for us to be able to make this investment, we're saying these are the communities that we see the promise and the potential of investing in. In this census tract, 40% of residents live below the poverty level. This is why it's important that we make sure transit is accessible for everyone. And it's so important that we make sure that individuals living with disabilities can get on board, right? Get on board with the same ease that I am able to get on board with. So this station, Brick Church, serves the Morris and Essex line, another historic railroad line, right? Has existed for 150 years. And it has some of the top ridership in the system, averaging over 1,600 riders a day, many of whom are taking the train to New York's Penn Station. And it serves as a regional transit hub to seven bus routes and commuter bus service. And since the station lacks an elevator, it makes it very difficult for people to choose this option in this community because they have to go elsewhere and that may not be convenient. It is not convenient in distance and it may not be convenient in time. So more riders are expected to come to the station because of the new development. And frankly, when we were thinking about when and where to make this announcement, we were looking at communities that are serious about transit-oriented development. We were looking about 
uh, at communities that are thinking about the important nexus of affordable housing and workforce housing and access to good quality food and mixed use development. And we have that here. So many local officials are calling this transit-oriented development project that we see here transformative. And it is transformative because when you are connecting people to all of these services and you're concentrating them around modes of transportation that work for people with frequency and reliability and affordability, you're really building and strengthening a community. And when we allow and encourage people and provide options for people to leave their car behind, they will. And when they have an option that works for them, they will choose that option. And for many people in many states across this country and in many communities across this country, we see that our communities are not necessarily always designed to support people walking and biking and scooting and taking transit. So we're really delighted here to be with you all to celebrate your investment and your support. So this is the latest tranche of federal support to New Jersey Transit. Since 2021, the U.S. Department of Transportation and FTA have given more than $5 billion in grants. And we need to say that. I've said it twice. We've heard Kevin say it. It's important to repeat. This is a lot of money. And it's highly competitive money. So the fact that New Jersey is getting it, you should thank your congressional delegation, your state delegation, your local delegation for being at the table negotiating for you. And it's important to see that, those negotiations because when the federal government makes an investment, we're looking to be a partner. We are not the sole funder. We need to see the partnership that exists, and that exists in New Jersey. So this funding includes funding that we've given in an earlier tranche, um, and New Jersey has been a be beneficiary and recipient of that too. So we've given NJ Transit $34 million to make accessibility upgrades at the Anderson Street Hackensack and Newbridge Landing and Bradley Beach Station. So that work is already underway. And also to design new platforms at the Chatham and Orange stations. We've also provided $47 million to modernize the Hilton bus garage for battery electric buses, a $75 million emergency relief grant to support repairs and relocation of a 70-year-old maintenance facility damaged during Hurricane Ida in 2021. I was actually on Amtrak waiting to come to D.C. Uh, and couldn't take Amtrak because it was the morning uh, after Hurricane Ida. So I remember those impacts. And $766.5 million for Portal North Bridge. And what a huge milestone to pass the 50% completion mark. Congratulations to the NJ Transit team. So, you know, we hear a lot about Infrastructure Week. Every day for us is Infrastructure Day. Every week we work is Infrastructure Week. Every month is Infrastructure Month. And of course, with this administration, infrastructure has been a priority. So today we are announcing one of eight grants to one of eight transit systems throughout the United States through this ASAP program, the All Stations Accessibility Program. And while FTA is providing another $343 million this year, the bipartisan infrastructure law provides $1.75 billion through fiscal year 26. We've never seen that amount of money, and this program is new with the bipartisan infrastructure law. So we greatly appreciate Congress for your support of this important new program. Not being able to access the entirety of this rich, dense system is a significant hurdle for so many. In fact, there's 951 stations of 3,720 rail stations in our country that are still inaccessible. So we still have some work to do. We're here to celebrate progress, but we have more work to do across this country. And we know these renovations are not cheap. Infrastructure is not inexpensive to support. So this funding matters. So combined with the announcement and the funding that Federal Transit Administration gave last year, 
More than 70 stations will be accessible in a few years. So I just want to close by thanking you all for this excellent turnout, for the investments in transit and the commitment to transit. And again, as a, a federal partner, we're looking to see our transit system strengthened and supported. And we need all of you as stakeholders, from community organizations and nonprofits to our, again, elected and appointed officials. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Veronica. You talk about having a, a, a federal official as a head of an agency who has the same passion she did 30 years ago and the subject matter expertise in the position that she's in in power is just really great if you're head of a transit agency. Veronica, thanks so much. Uh, speaking of uh, passion and dedication, uh, I referred to her earlier, but we have uh, two representatives of Congress who have been critical and certainly uh, like to pick up where we uh, left off on that with uh, Congresswoman uh, Cheryl to come up and uh, say a few words. Mikey, if you please. Wow, it is wonderful to be here today. You know, when I first was running for Congress, someone said to me, Mikey, New Jersey used to really be able to build big projects. We built the path. We had other great infrastructure prog projects. What happened? What happened? Well, I took that as a personal challenge to figure out exactly what happened and how we could do better here in New Jersey. And when we all come together, when we have great mayors like Mayor Green, thank you so much for welcoming us here today. I mean, what a vibrant, vibrant town that we see with your leadership. When we have great state senators like Brittany Timberlake fighting for us. When we have a congressional delegation with members like Rob Menendez constantly working hard to bring back the dollars to New Jersey, we can make real change, and that's why we're here today. You heard it. These are highly competitive grants. So we wrote the legislation. Rob's on the uh, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and, and I do have to give a shout out to um, our friend Don Payne, who is still very missed at these events who would love to be here today to see what he fought for and was able to bring home to our district. So when we have great people fighting, we can bring back these wonderful projects, but it's hard to do, and you need to do a great job at every single level. And that's why you see so many people here today who've worked incredibly hard. And I want to thank you. I want to thank your whole team who you mentioned that's been working hard on these creative projects. Kevin, thank you so much for the constant work that you do. And that's why we're here today. That's why we're here today with this great project because, look, I'm a history major. I love history. I think some of the details on this station are beautiful. But we've got to keep moving forward. The beauty of New Jersey is that we have this deep history, but we continue with the innovation to build on top of that history so that we can continue to deliver for the people of New Jersey. We can continue to deliver the best neighborhoods in America. We can continue to deliver that innovative economy so that we bring everybody up. And I think what's really important about what we're doing here is these grants are competitive and part of the competition is to invest in historically underserved areas. Areas that have been overlooked sometimes, that haven't had the benefit of the largesse of the federal government in ways that they should have historically. And so now here we are today, and this, when we hear that 40% of federal funding goes to communities that historically have been underserved or disadvantaged through public and private, private sector, this was a goal of President Biden. And this is a goal that really warms my heart. Because when government is at its best, it provides opportunity to people. And as to paraphrase my, my uh, former Democratic person in our party who was just a great, was Paul Wellstone. He said, when we all do better, we all do better. 
So here in New Jersey, we're making sure we can all do better, that we all have access to great jobs and great opportunities. And this station and the development that East Orange and Mayor Green are doing around this station is going to make a huge impact to the ability of New Jersey's economy to continue to innovate, continue to bring more people into it, and continue to lead into the future. So I just want to thank everybody involved in this project. It truly is a very exciting project. And as you heard from Kevin, I have to keep delivering ring on infrastructure or I can't go home at night because my <laughs> husband takes New Jersey Transit and when the uh, and Kevin I know you're working on this but when the uh, the Montclair Booten line goes down uh, I get frantic calls to meet him at uh, East Orange Station so I can pick him up when he gets on the Morris and Essex line so um, I continue to deliver on infrastructure, not just because I care so much about the people of New Jersey, but to keep my marriage intact. So it's a dedication of mine. Thank you all very much. Uh, yeah, and her husband has my cell number as well, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, and following up on that, you know, we, you know, uh, the congressman referred about you know, how it takes dedicated effort. Transit isn't just a one, done, one and done, you check the box. It's a 24-7, 365 business. It's a tough business. Uh, you know, it's not a profitable like the private sector, so we're constantly struggling for funding. And that battle uh, largely comes, we have to do our share in New Jersey, but a large chunk of that comes from Washington. And if you miss a couple of years, it takes so long to make back up for those years where you're not getting it. And that's where I think you see uh, Congress Menendez, uh, you know, Rob, what you do in Congress to help make sure that we keep that pipeline coming and working in a bipartisan way to really deliver t and is, is, is so critical for us. So please come up and say a few words. Well, good afternoon. Um, it's an honor to be here today to celebrate the FTA's All Stations Accessibility Program grant of over $80 million to NJ Transit. I want to thank the mayor for having us, East Orange, Senator, my colleague Mikey, all of our state and federal partners. I want to join Mikey in, um, in remembering our colleague, Don Payne. Uh, he represented East Orange. He believed and having infrastructure across this entire state. He believed in mass transit systems that worked for everybody. And when the sign says investing in America, Don believed in investing in every part of America, especially underserved communities. And he would have been so delighted today. So thank you all for making this a reality for the 10th Congressional District. And um, we'll continue the work uh, alongside the rest of the delegation to continue to deliver for New Jersey. And this is a monumental step forward in the transformation of the historic Brick Church Station. The project is more than just about improving infrastructure. It's about reaffirming our values of equity, accessibility, and inclusivity. It's about ensuring that every individual, regardless of their mobility needs, can navigate our transportation system with dignity and with ease. In addition to the people who have mobility challenges, it's also parents, moms and dads who have strollers who are trying to bring their kids to school or to their next doctor's appointment. That's what today's about. Taking this incredible infrastructure that was built over 100 years ago and making it modern, making it accessible for all of our communities so that they have the right, the accessibility to our incredible mass transit system, which NJ Transit is such an incredible steward of. And while today is a great day, the work has to continue. To have an incredible infrastructure system, to have incredible mass transit systems, every part of it needs to work. So we need to continue to invest across our state and across every municipality, every county, every part of this state to ensure that our transit systems work for everyone. So today is a great day. It's a monumental step forward. But I commit myself, along with Mikey, along with our state and federal partners, to pushing the ball forward making sure that today is one of many great days moving forward. I'm excited to celebrate those days with you moving forward. Thank you all so much. Uh, thank you. I mentioned uh, the support on the state level we get, and certainly there's no more important for us than having a supportive board and have been uh, as our uh, acting uh, transportation commissioner for the state, but more importantly as our, our board chair, Fran O'Connor, who has stepped in last year and has really uh, dived in and is doing all he can to support the, support the team at Transit, make sure on the state level that we're, we're, we're stepping up for our federal partners. Fran, would you please come up? Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kevin. First, I want to extend my heartfelt appreciation to all our distinguished guests 
and public transit advocates here today. It's great to be here with you at what is a very promising moment for the city of East Orange and the thousands of commuters who use this station every week. As we gather to celebrate this significant $83 million grant from the Federal Transit Administration, it is important to reflect on the broader impact of the FTA's All System Accessibility Program. By improving accessibility at stations like Brick Church, the FTA is benefiting communities across the country, enhancing the quality of life for individuals with disabilities and making public transit more inclusive for all users. The FTA is supporting economic growth, reducing our environmental impact and improving everyday travel for millions of Americans. These initiatives are part of Governor Murphy's long-term vision to transform public transit into a more efficient and sustainable option for travelers everywhere, underpinning our commit commitment to a healthier, more prosperous future. Here at Brick Church, the grant is a crucial step toward enhancing the quality of life for East Orange residents. And these efforts are truly aligned with New Jersey DOT's broader mission to ensure a safe, reliable, and efficient transportation system across New Jersey. As we already heard, these funds were enabled significant improvements here, including the installation of, of high-level platforms, new elevators, and revamped pedestrian tunnels. Upgrade to the station's fiber network will also support a new public announcement system with digital displays and hearing loops, enhancing accessibility for individuals with visual and hearing impairments. As Kevin mentioned, the FTA grant will build on the oncoming, ongoing comprehensive revitalization of New Jersey Transit's Brick Church Station, including a full restoration of the station house, integrated modern design and enhanced functionality for all passengers. Collectively, these improvements seek to create a more inclusive, efficient, and enjoyable experience for all users of, at Brick Church Station. As we continue to leverage funds from the bipartisan infrastructure law, let's remember the broader picture. These projects are about people. They're about making life better for every New Jersey resident today and tomorrow. They're about building a legacy of sustainability, accessibility, and economic vitability. In closing, I want to repeat my appreciation for everyone who played a role in securing this grant, particularly FTA's, FTA's Acting Administrator Vanderpool and their, and their generous reward, and to President Biden and Governor Murphy on their leadership to our commitment to supporting New Jersey's transportation infrastructure. I look forward to seeing the transformation at Brick Church Station and the continued prosperity it brings to each, each East Orange and beyond. Thank you, and I look forward to continue to push the boundaries of what we can achieve together. And uh, as uh, both our Members of Congress said, and uh, certainly the administrator, uh, it really, in, in being competitive, need to show also the local support and the passion, dedication, particularly not just to the project, but to the overall community, particularly for those uh, communities that have been long uh, underserved. And uh, we certainly have a great example of that here in Orange and with uh, Senator Timberlake. So, uh, Brittany, if you'd uh, come up. Yeah, we finally made it. Huh? <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. And the pleasantries have been done to our congressional delegation. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, our, our city, uh, Mayor Ted Green, a constant partner in this project, along with my good friend, uh, Naima Fontleroy, a councilwoman in the city of East Orange now, who when she was with my office, was also very entrenched in this project and making sure that it would succeed. To New Jersey Transit, for those of you who have been a part of the conversations around Brick Church since 2018, please stand or wave your hand. Yes, because I have to say thank you to you. Thank you so much. I see you back there, Dawn. Thank you so much to you because this here, where we're standing, well, one, it's my hometown. 
And two, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're standing within a dream of mine that I dreamed alongside with my friend, Mayor Green, and alongside the seniors of this community who were longing for ADA accessibility, who came with the PowerPoint presentation and said, we have disparities that exist, and they went and took pictures of train stations all around the region and came back and said, will you help us? And I made a promise to them that day, gathered our friends, the mayor made a promise to them that day as they met with us inside of City Hall, and we did not stop until this day was realized. His name has already been mentioned, and I wear his pin. It says pain for my dear friend, Congressman Donald Payne Jr. Now his time as a congressional member, he was actually the senior Democrat on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, uh, Rail Committee. He actually introduced a bill, it was called Invest in America Act. Guess what? That became the bipartisan 1.2 trillion infrastructure investment and jobs act. <laughs> Guess what? This was the last project that he and I worked on together, hand in hand, as partners as we did at least for the last 10 years. And I'm incredibly grateful for his life and for his service and for his dedication to this community. And I'm incredibly grateful for leveraging the $30 million at the state. And we were able to make a match through this, through the New Jersey Department of Transportation. And I gotta tell you, well, yes, this is a dream, but I have another one and it's right down the street and Kevin knows all about it. And we're gonna go after for more money for the East Orange Station as well, because we have to be proactive about rebuilding our infrastructure. We have to be proactive to prevent anything from happening. And that's what this is about for this community, the city of East Orange and for District 34. God bless you all and thank you so much. Is that my husband? Say hello to my husband, everyone. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Thank you. That, that, that in New Jersey, we're, we're shameless. We, yeah, we <laughs> move on. Right, I'm with you on the next one. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and then I'd like to now for our last uh, speaker for this morning, uh, Mayor Ted Green. Again, someone going back to 2018. We're, both, we're all here to actually see this come to fruition. Mayor, come on up. Thank you. All right, hold up. Let's keep that energy going. Let's keep that energy going. We are excited here in the city of East Orange, but let me just thank a few pre people. Our Federal Trans Transit Administration, Acting Administrator Veronica Vanderpool, thank you so much. Let's give her another round of applause. NJ, DOT Commissioner Francis O'Connor, thank you very much. To New Jersey Transit CEO Kevin Corbett, give him another round of applause. Kev, thank you. To our Congresswoman, Mikey Sherrill, thank you for always being here in the city of East Orange. Also, to our Congressman, Robert Mendez, give him a round of applause also for being here. And also to the late Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, who also had a part of being a part of this project. Give her a round of applause. We thank God for her. And our very dear friend, Donald Payne Jr., give him a round of applause. What, what we do here in the, city, in the city of East Orange, we do not do it alone. We do it with a group of people who have a vision, who cares about the people here in our city. But I do want to acknowledge our council people here, Kasim Gomez, who sit in the fourth ward, our councilwoman, Naima Fonderod, give her a round of applause. And our second ward councilman who hails from this ward, Christopher Alway, give him a round of applause. And to my entire staff that's here, give them a round of applause. But 
to a gentleman who I was out on a conference and trying to bring back redevelopment and bring big box stores and retail and commercial stores back to our community gave me a call. I want to give our chairman, Leroy J. Jones Jr. a round of applause. And when he called me and told me what New Jersey Transit was doing, I was actually on my way coming home and my wife and I were sitting there waiting for our car to come with my detail to get on the road. And when he said, hey man, I got a secret for you. I said, what's the secret? He said, New Jersey Transit is going to make an announcement on Tuesday and it's going to be a $84 million project. So I said to him, I said, wow, are you playing with me? Are you kidding? He said, no, I'm not kidding. So as we stand here today, yes, we're excited. And I'm excited because as a young man who grew up in this city, who many times my father and my mother, who rode my sister and I and my youngest brother on this train, going to New York, and was, as a young man, you have saw that when you get on this train, when you're young, this train station looked so big and so beautiful and vibrant. But that was almost, what, 40 to 50 years ago. And today, that just shows that when it comes to our federal government, when it comes to our delegation, when it comes to local and private partnerships, and when it comes to the community, that these things like this can work in any community. And what better place when we talk about we're starting off this drive with this uh, transit village uh, and in instruction, infrastructure rather, and East Orange is one of the first places you stop. We really thank you for that and give yourselves another round of applause. We, we're, we're very excited because as our senator said, we've been fighting for a long time. And as the mayor, my second to third day in office, I had a group of residents come up to my office and say, Mayor, what are you going to do about the train station? And what I said to them is, what are we going to do? We're going to work together and we're going to make sure that we pull in our elected officials, our state representatives. And I have to say this, that at that time when Senator Brittany Timberlake was just a senator, I mean, just an assemblywoman. We both, along with our team, went down to New Jersey Transit and had a conversation. And from that conversation, this is the results of what happens when you work together. We are proud to announce to all our residents in this community, because when you have residents who are concerned about the growth in it, revitalization of a community that is so rich in history and, trans and, and, and transit in our community. We are proud of our residents because now our, presidents, uh, our residents who look on today, they had a voice. They had a voice in making sure that as elected officials and public servants that we did our job. And we want all our residents to know that your voice did not go unheard. So give them a round of applause for that. So, so as we close out today, with 70,000 residents that resides in our city and close to 1,500 or 2,000 some people who ride this train each and every day, in a couple of months from now, it's something that they could be proud of. It's something that our community can say that we did it together with New Jersey Transit and federal dollars. $84 million, $84 million billion is a lot of money. And we're proud to know that we are recipients of that. I do want to say this. Yes, you can get that a round of applause. This development here, uh, with our partners, wrap around a project that is $500 million project. I just want to give um, Triangle Equities a round of applause for working with us, Josh and his team. Good, Josh. And those guys. And this is just an example of a movement in our city 
that everybody can be proud of because we thank New Jersey Transit for thinking of East Orange because East Orange is that place. And I can say this, those who haven't forgotten about East Orange, we won't forget about you. And we really appreciate this. And I know the residents who are watching today, they appreciate it. As the mayor, our council, and residents, we thank God for all of you. We thank all of you for allowing us to be part of just a historical moment here in the city of East Storms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, it did, as someone reminded me, the year before we came in, New Jersey Transit did less than $60 million in a hard money contract 2017, and we're now doing billions of dollars of, of projects. And $85 million is more than what it did in the entire year of 2017, so thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd now ask uh, the uh, Administrator Vanderpool to come back up for a little uh, ceremony. Can I say a few words? Yep. Over here? Okay, well. All right, Carol's redirecting. If all the speakers could come up, and uh, we have the uh, ceremonial check to be uh, presented. So, thank you.